Abostet, vi tar det vi. Den jag har pina igen den i Norgeon, den där var kan jag. Det tror jag steg i Genebi, den hugger jag nu. Det är den där som jag har steg jag har sin mars i Tjena Hattuk. Den är det han i Åke danse to dem teke te damskan te nao kakyo. I want to bring greetings to all of you. I want to welcome you here to Treaty 6 territory. On behalf of the 18 First Nations who live in the central area, I want to bring greetings to all of you. I want to thank my good friend Gilman for leading us in prayer and guiding us and reminding us that when we do things that we should always call upon the Creator first. And so um, I'm very happy that we've been working together for many years and we continue to do that. It's good to see you here again, Gilman. As well as Miranda, the work that she's done, she's continued to be an advocate and a voice for the indigenous people. And I'm very happy that uh, she invited me to come and help again and to be a part of this. So if we could just give both of them a nice uh, round of applause for the work Uh, all the leaders who, I mean all the readers who are here uh, reading and guiding us through and all the helpers, we want to thank you very much for, for taking on this responsibility to, to tell a story in a short time frame, we told a story that's so important for all of us to see and to recognize. And so let's give all of them a round of applause. <laughs> My name is uh, Chief Tony Alexis, I'm from the Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation. I'm also the uh, present Grand Chief of Treaty Number Six, and I've had privileges to see many things in my travels. I come from a community, and my background is my background is of uh, the Native heritage. My father's my greatest teacher on earth. His name is Dan Alexis, and he's coming to in his life where he feels that his life is starting to come to end. Is what the way he talked to me last night. And, you know, I went to visit him and he was laying by his bed and he was telling me he was feeling lonely and not feeling good about it. And I'm starting to get used to being alone, he said. And never, my dad and I, we always have a relationship that, and the relationship is about, I love my dad and he has taught me many things in my life. And we're never very uh, personal or emotional, things like that. We're always business. Get work done, go to work. Kick my butt to work, whatever. He does that. But last night before I left, he, he was laying down and he was looking at me. And his hand came up to shake my hand. That has never happened in my entire life. So it touched me and it, it moved me and I didn't know what it meant. But I shook his hand and afterwards I left. But I tell you that story because of the ceremony that we just witnessed, the activity that we just witnessed, the readings that we've just heard, the stories that we have heard, that the people have come through so much. And sometimes it comes to a point where we come full circle. And sometimes it comes to a point where that it's just a handshake, an important handshake that reminds us that we are all connected and that we are all loved and that we are all supported and that we are all a part of this world that we call Makuchi, means the land. The land is like Mother Earth. If we think right now, my grandfather, five generations ago, just south from here, uh, 139 years ago, was the one who adhered to treaty for Alexis, treaty number six. He was uh, one year after the treaty was signed, he adhered to treaty. And I'm the fifth generation of that, that chief who did that. And when you think about it, I wonder what he was thinking when he sat down to lift that pipe, to smoke that pipe. I wonder what he was thinking as he did that. I wonder what all the people who were in the room were thinking. I wonder if they thought 139 years from now, just north where we are standing, lifting this pipe, our people and your people will be inside City Hall, will be inside a place of leadership talking about the passage we are just going to go through. I wonder if they thought that. Probably not. But they, I bet they thought that a 
tomorrow was going to be a better day together. So let us all think 100 years from now. The passage that we have gone through is the truth. The truth as written by academics, by academia, the, the institutions. But there's also another story. And someday you may hear the story of the people. The people will tell you a story that comes from the nation. And when that story comes to you, it'll resonate with some of the stories that we have from, from the work of the institutions that have been putting this information together. And when we do, we'll find that there's a duty and a responsibility for all of us. And that responsibility is to bring thanks, giving to the Creator, the way we started this activity today with Gilman leading us. It's all about that. It's all about the Creator. However you pray in your world, in your life, in your daily moment, your personal relationship with something greater than you, that's your business. But as a people, we have to come back to the Lodge. By coming back to the Lodge, the way I understand it through my father, is that in the center of it is the Creator. And everybody has a duty to build and work to sustain it and to look after one another. But in the institutions, it's not made like that. It's actually made like this pyramid above us. There's a top, there's a hierarchy, and there's systems. And sometimes the systems break down. And so people are always working hard to keep those wheels moving. But there's never any rest in there. And sometimes that rest includes the oil sands, includes pipelines, it includes cutting down trees, it includes hurting the environment, the thing that we need the most, Mother Earth. And the systems is there to sustain itself. But we also know within those institutions, there are very intelligent, smart people. All of you have a gift, and all of you have an intent and purpose. And from that place, there are people who know how to create economics in a clean way. There are people who know how to create systems in a clean and healthy way that protects Mother Earth. There is a shift that is happening in the world, and that shift has to include looking after the land. What we see here today, there are a lot of little islands everywhere, and sometimes we think that we are not the same. But we all suffer the same. We all go through the storms the same. We're all given the same tools to go through the storm, every storm, in our personal life, in our family life, in our community life, and in our world. And the way we go through all of those is through the Creator. And so, if I have an intent here tonight, my intent here tonight is to remind us all that there is something more than us, and that however we have come through the storm, and some are actually still standing in the storm, and there are some who are not even thinking about it. So the ones who've gone through the passage need to come back and replenish to get the others through, and we leave nobody behind. So let's think about the Creator today, and we give thanks. We give thanks that we didn't have to go through all of that, that we are standing here today on this beautiful day, on this anniversary day, when people gathered, when people talked about reconciliation. And that means coming to peace with ourselves, peace with our neighbor, peace with our Creator. I want to wish you all a beautiful rest of the evening. Many blessings, many prayers to all of you, and I want to thank you for joining us and being a part of this wonderful evening. Thank you very much.